Winner by unanimous decision and new undisputed TNA Wednesday champion of the world Odd Taxi. Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu. It is Wednesday. We have finished Wonder Egg Priority. We have done a poll. I will have put up a uh, poll results video on YouTube just a minute ago. It's currently uploading. I just rendered it out. Um, and we are here to watch the new winner of the Wednesday seasonal, recent seasonal poll slot thing which is Odd Taxi. I'm not going to get into the poll results and how it went because I made a video for that. If you want to check that video out, it'll be it'll be on it's on the YouTube. You can go and find it and, and get your statistical itch scratched. Uh, but we're going to be watching Odd Taxi. As I mentioned in that poll video, I know nothing about this show. What I know is there are anthropomorphic animals and it's called Odd Taxi. Um, this is a list of things that are true. It is Odd Taxi and there are anthropomorphic animals and there's a taxi. That's all I got. Um, people have been pretty into this show. A lot of the people on my Discord who are into more, like, intriguing media have been really championing this one. So I'm excited. Um, there were a lot of shows on the most recent poll that I was super interested in seeing. And this was definitely on the top of the list for me. And uh, apparently on the top of the list for a lot of people. Because it won. Um, not by a huge, huge margin. But by enough of a margin to call it pretty conclusive. So... Uh, there's not much to talk about here in the beginning, um, because I don't know anything about the show, so let's go ahead and get on into it and see what the heck we are dealing with. I did just pull it up, and maybe, maybe, I, I have it on camera, so maybe I'll just show you the, the, like, reaction that I had to pulling it up. Interesting. Um, because the first frame is immediately interesting. Um, I can see the very first frame of the episode up. Uh, I don't know if this is the style that it will be maintained throughout it, but we've got a very interesting, uh, flat, no line art, um, all painted style on this first frame. And that is different. Um, immediately different. We've also got a, like, walrus dude in a little, in a little blue hat, sipping on a juice box with his taxi behind him. I assume it's, I assume it's his taxi. He seems to be, like, on the job with a dark blue city behind him with kind of neon lights and shit. And, uh, it, it looks pretty cool. I'm kind of excited by this first frame. I know that's crazy to talk about the first frame of the, of the anime, but, um, that's what I'm looking at, and it it makes me interested for sure. So we're going to be watching Odd Taxi. I think this is a 12 or 13 episode series show thing, and so that's what we'll be doing for the next three months or so uh, on, on Venice days. Okay, um... Do I have anything to talk about? Yeah, I'll, I'll show the Patreon. If you want to influence polls in the future or you want to get episodes of this or other shows a little bit early, you can get early access and Discord access and polling access and all that jazz uh, via the Patreon, which is linked in the description. Check that out. It helps a ton. If you want to like, if you want to subscribe, um, those things help out on the YouTube side as well. But the thing that directly translates to my ability to continue doing this is 100% the support that I get from my patrons who are the bomb. Um, I love you guys. You guys are, are seriously the best. I literally could not do any of this without you. Um, you are the reason I can eat, and uh, it, is, it is greatly appreciated. Okay, enough of that. Enough of, enough of the shill stuff. Let's get into the real stuff. We got Odd Taxi. I don't know what the, where this is coming out of. We'll probably look at studio and stuff at the end. We're going to watch this 23-ish minute episode of this anime, and we're going to see what the heck we're dealing with. Uh, I downloaded the subs please version of the first episode off of nya.si. Um, highly recommend the, the nya. If you can get this in more more totally legal means, you are totally do that. Um, there will be two versions of this reaction. As always, you can find a picture-in-picture -picture version with the video inset into the video uh, linked down in the description. The picture-in-picture -picture version we'll have no discussion at the end all the discussion will be on the timer version so if you go and watch the picture in picture version come back here to hear my thoughts on the end of the thing because usually i save a lot of the stuff that i want to talk about until the end um and usually on first episodes we end up going kind of hard on on dissecting what we're looking at and i think that that's fun i i like doing that a lot of people like seeing that um you might not and that's totally cool 
There will also be the timer version, which you are watching right now. This is a timer-based recording reaction thing. Um, it won't have the video in it. It will have the subtitles in at the bottom down over here. Um, but it's meant for you to sync up your own copy of the episode with this timer-based version. And for some people, that's way better, especially if you're watching on PC. Then you can minimize my ugly face and not look at me and just hear my voice as like a, a uh, riff tracks or MST3K sort of uh, vibe going on here. Um, if you want to do that, get your own copy of Odd Taxi Episode 1 up and ready to go because I've got Episode 1 up and ready to go. There will be a beep beep timer which will go boop 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 beep and on the beep and the green light uh, is the exact frame that I've synced up in post where the video starts playing on my screen. So if you want to get it all perfectly synced up, that's a perfect mechanical way of doing that. Um, get your copy ready. The beep beep timer is coming at you. Let's go for Odd Taxi Episode 1 and see what kind of a wild taxi ride we end up on. Beep beep timer. Oh, it's an OP. An episode one OP? That's actually unique. Or this might be the ED. This might be the ED used as the... Hello, Kit Kat. That one sound effect I thought was like somebody knocking. Okay. <laughs> we got good music. Oh, hello. Reminds me of Kagura masks. Is this the easy breezy of the season? Yes. Okay, and we've got some sick animation as well. Oh, birds, please. <laughs> Dude, that is, this is such a groovy song. I don't know whether I hope that, I hope it's the ED so that we get a doper OP song next episode. That's what I hope for. That's, I know that's an insane, okay, here we go. Underwater, Ford drops through. <laughs> critical, critical, roll, roll. Okay. Uh, is that a body? Was that a body? Okay, a weird dream. Premonition or just a dream? Got some oyocha. Ha. Huh. Yeah, it literally branded uh, uh, that tea, which I actually really like. Sure. Missing girl. The Homo sapiens. All right, Grammy City. I love the background art style. The eccentric driver. Okay, solid CG. Good move to blur that. That's really good. Oof. Dude, we just fully swapped styles using that, that background sequence. Okay, so the characters don't quite fit the background style with the like wavy lines. Yeah, solid, fine CG work. Doesn't matter. Fuck you. <laughs> this has to be custom music for this. All right, we're in not Tokyo. Oh, that guy's a player. Oh, hey, what up? So we're already focusing on individuals with menial jobs. I think he was the dude with all the phones in the OP. Who the fuck is singing? Hi, that's a really cute sheep. Doctor? Scientist? Oh my god. 
And the, the, those three are the, the, those people. And we got some, uh, some punks. And these are all people who end up taking the taxi, right? I want a glow stick, man. All right, we got our first customer. Uh huh. All right, back to reality. Take the meter, and off we go. So taxi driver as a job is very interesting because you, you end up experiencing a lot of like little snippets of other people's lives without actually forming a connection with them, right? Like, it's, it's part of your job to not form a connection. Okay. So I wonder how deep we go into the individual lives. Okay. But you're also like a bartender in that people talk to you. Nope. Had a weird dream. Nah, man. I'm a taxi driver. Uh, uh, eh. Okay. Okay, a little bit calculating. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that was not the best of the five answers. Because he's bored. Oh. Uh huh. But why? <laughs> Do you really think about which of the five options? An interesting perspective. This is true and scary. Isn't that the question? Sometimes. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh huh. Because people. Oh, that's not true. That's not true at all. Uh-huh. Yeah. Very pretentious. All right. He's not. He's a taxi driver, man. He doesn't have to give a fuck. He's got one useful job that he has to do. Oh, for sure you can make things up. Why not? I had a weird conversation with a driver. Look all grumpy. Till a little, 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 little. Check this out. It'll cheer you up. And took a picture of us, Lamau. What? No. Sometimes. <laughs> Blow, blown the fuck out. Absolutely wrecked. Holy crap. Hello, policia. Are those dogs or raccoons? Or I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. We've got a relationship with some police. Ah. Friends with him? He was the guy we saw polishing the gun. Who was juxtaposed with the idols. 
either for contrast or for closeness. I'm not sure. Okay, we're nine minutes in. This is already fascinating. I like this show. Okay. Right. The Unseen. Yeah, but he knew something that you just covered. Okay. <laughs> eh. Yeah, as you drive around at night. I I love the style. Did you just fall into it? There's no why, right? Coming up with five responses. Oh, we get backstory. Holy shit. What? What? What was that? Hey, we got a chuckle. See, and we don't know where this guy's going. Will we follow him out is my question. Sick. Should we get another customer tonight, or do we watch him? What a feel. You are specifically warned. Uh. Whoa. Ha 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 ha. Oh shit. Oh shit. He was in the foot. Oh, that's cool. That was cool looking. Is he meeting with the, the sheep woman? Is he meeting with the sheep woman who we saw? I think so. Oh, cool. Cool eye catch. Love the contrast with the orange and then the sunset and then the white city. That's super sick. Okay, he's right in the middle of something. That girl was your fair, right? Mo. <laughs> oh my, wa <well>, mo. <laughs> Wait, she's hiding in... What? She's hiding here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Clinic, doctor, gorilla guy. Is the sheep from the clinic missing as well? Because she was talking to the bad dude. Goriki Clinic. All right, there he is. Nope, she's there. Cool. Dude, we got an interesting mystery in the background here. Very filmic.
Is that the MacGuffin? What? Is Don Raku a pun? I mean, Raku part is, but more boring than Sutras. Fair enough. Uh, Gorilla Doctor. Clearly. Old school. Triple old school. Uh. Kids know what they are. Very, very blunt man. <laughs> Boy, you need a woman. <laughs> See, now we're in Generation Gap territory. What is this part of the conversation? What the fuck? He just likes saying it. Yeah. It is fun to say. Uh huh. Nothing. That. So he can't sleep. You're really cute. I really love her design a lot. I hope she stays safe. Why are you staring at my car? Mmm, you were the taxi driver. Thank God you didn't, because the girl's in there. Sure, I'll cooperate. Yeah, where's your bro? He doesn't still have the phone, right? And he shouldn't have anything to hide in the car. It's a taxi, man. What do you expect? Ooh, he's got a record of everybody who's been in there. Which means there's evidence of her coming back to your house. Where's your warrant? Where's your warrant? Where's your warrant? Give me my shit back. Where's your warrant? Yeah, you're fucking around, bud. You're involved with that that gorilla. Or that, that monkey. <sighs> okay, just get a threat from a police officer. You're right in the middle of something now, Mr. Driver. Right in the middle. I fucking love it. I really love the idols. It's such a cool thing to have in the background of everything. I, I, the whole, like, world building is really interesting. This is the cleaner. Yes, that is true and deeply unfortunate. Yeah, but young people don't want to do manual labor. Is he on, like, fantasy Tinder? Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! Hell yeah. That'll get him. Height, seven foot two. Oh. 
Hello. So they're drinking buddies, and that so is the taxi driver, probably. Damn, he bought a lot of food. Why? Uh huh. Oh. Cool backing track. Right. Okay. Coming to like this guy. Got their shit kicked in. Holy fuck. <laughs> it's a weird thing to bring up. Yeah, a lot of rumors. Dude, the dialogue is so interesting. It's so good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Something missing. Witch medicine. Sleeping pills? <gasps> the sheep! She's selling it on the black market! Oh my fuck! Uh-huh, that's a problem. Oh, she's an alpaca. Okay, that makes actually more sense. I don't think she's that young. I also don't think she's that innocent. What the fuck? What a what a tangled web we weave. He's got such a great character design. Oh. Oh! And all the music is so good. Y'all done good. Y'all y'all pull people, y'all done good. The storytelling is the tits. It's just, it's the best. It's so not anime. That's it? Ah. Uh. I'm sure. I I unequivocally love this first episode. 
what it i keep coming back to this to the the idiom like what a tangled web is being woven here every character has a, a weird part to play in this intricate seeming story of like corruption and uh uh theft potential kidnapping but we know it's not actually a kidnapping and then the police officer knows that Dobu isn't responsible for the girl's disappearance because he's working with him. But they're after the girl for some reason, right? They, they want her for some reason. What? And then there's the underground drug sales of massive amounts of psychotropic drugs by the alpaca nurse to the underground this is fascinating. This is fascinating. Um, it, um, uh, oh, uh, uh, um, okay. Some some part of this, not just the the idea of being a driver for people, um, but the character of of Orokawa, right? Is that his name? I want to get his name down. Give me a sec. Otokawa. Cool. Um, something about Otokawa's character reminds me quite a lot, in a weird way, of Ryan Gosling's character in Driver. Um, or uh, uh, Drive, the 2011 film. Um, because of his, like, we, we see his disconnect from society. He's listening to the radio and stuff, and, and he's all of that stuff is just fading into the background, and he's just disconnected from it. He sees so much of it that comes through his taxi, but he's off. He's, there's something weird about him. Not in a suspicious way yet, but maybe in a suspicious way. Maybe in a weird way. We don't know. So much interesting mystery has already been set up in this first episode, and and I feel like we have all the driving elements for a really fascinating story, and I have no idea what direction it's heading. Um... I don't I don't know whether this is going to become like a fucking action show where our driver is trying to protect this girl who's now staying with him for her own reasons um, or whether this is just going to be sort of an anthology where he touches on the lives of all of these other people and this like overarching story that's going on. I really don't know. What I do know is that the way we set up characters and show the interactions between them and show the sort of like individual lives within a broader city life is meticulous and excellent and really really interesting um we open with the whole opening feels so picture perfectly hollywood you know in a weird way right open with a dream sequence of something something bad right that's a body for sure now that we know that we've got crime and corruption in play that's classic um uh, concrete shoes like drop somebody into the body weighted into the river or into the the bay weighted down with stuff um and and tied up but it's also a dream it's not real he's just dreaming um high school student goes missing immediately the driving force probably of the plot of the show is set up for us and i don't even notice it but we get it in multiple multiple aspects and multiple reminders right we get it here we get it when we talk to the cops we get it a bit later it's just there 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 we're really keyed into what's going on in this show but before we can talk about what's going on in this show, we have to talk about the visual language here um, and and the style. Immediately after the first frames of this thing, we know we're in for something different. We don't know whether that will hold true for the whole thing, but we watch this OP, and the OP is the best OP I've heard in a while. It's, it's groovy as hell, and it is at this point that I pull up the Mal page. Um and start to find out information about who is behind this show. Who did Skirt and Pun P? Never heard of Skirt and Pun P. Um, nope. The, but they're blowing up because they're the opening to Odd Taxi. Uh, cool. Who is responsible for this? And what studio? This is coming out of OLM and PICS. Um, okay. Cool. I haven't seen anything new from OLM in a while, I don't think. Uh, oh, no, no, OLM is, is responsible for Isekai Shokudo, one of my favorite shows. 
okay, interesting. And then PICS uh, working on Odd Taxi, and this is pretty much like a breakout thing for them. They did Space Bug, a kid's show. They did 24H, which didn't, I don't know, it's music in 2010. Um, this is new stuff for them. I don't know anything about the studio. Cool. Who's directing? Uh, Baku Kinoshita. First Direction. Amazing debut. Um, uh, uh, amazing. Immediately amazing. This guy has watched a lot of film, and you can see it. Uh, Kazu Konomoto on script. Odd Taxi has made uh, uh, published the manga for Odd Taxi. Crow's Respect and Setotsumi. Cool. Um, dig it. This is basically a debut by most of these people, and that's absolutely insane. Uh, absolutely insane. Okay, cool. Stylistically fascinating. Super different. Immediately sets it apart from everything else that's going on. I'm sure that there are a bunch of clues in this OP. Now that I see like this sequence, right? That's the cat there, and then it's him on the inside, and he's flipping between the gorilla and the uh, the nurse. We wipe across with a windshield wiper. And then, then shit falls immediately upon us. I don't know what the exploding thing is. I don't know what this thing is. I guess that's a rat race, right? Literally a rat race. Um, that's got to be the cat girl who's gone missing. Somebody dropping into the ocean. And we are dwarfed by the city around us. That's something that feels really, really powerful and thematic here. Is that, that our taxi driver, like, what what is a taxi driver, right? It's it's a service that is generally replaceable. If you can't get one taxi, you can get another. It doesn't really matter to the user who like who is driving the taxi that they use. It's just a service that gets them from point A to point B. And that's what makes it so interesting, right? Because again, you touch on the lives of all of these people while forming these very tenuous, very short-term connections with them. Sometimes you'll have you'll have uh, uh, people come into your car who just don't talk and don't want to talk talk and aren't interested and sometimes you'll have like people who are trying to be your friend and have conversations with you but you're probably in all likelihood never going to see them again so there's this weird social interaction and lack of social interaction right you have to know the niceties of of how to be pleasant and like get your fare basically and not have somebody just jump out of your car and not pay you um but you don't have to dig deep or really have much of a conversation with them and it's so interesting that our main character, like his his view of himself is unclear to us. We're not sure how he sees himself because the thing that he says about like, oh, I come up with five different options and I, I choose the one that won't offend anybody and blah, 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 blah is totally not how he actually acts. He chooses the one, he either doesn't come up with uh, uh, one that doesn't offend people, or he ju doesn't choose that one. He says what's on his mind, mostly, as far as we can tell. He's very blunt, very sarcastic, as the gorilla says later, um, and just sort of sort of going with the flow, but in sort of an, I'm, an, I'm a dude who's just in this life and I'm going for it. I, I, I don't ha doesn't seem to have any like core motivations, doesn't seem to have anything like super interesting going on in his life, don't know what his backstory and past is, but we do know that we get this really interesting flashback sequence when he gets asked about why he's a taxi driver that implies that he's got some kind of an interesting past. On the surface, just plot point, plot point, plot point, I would actually liken this in a lot of ways to like a, uh, a Korean revenge thriller um, in, in certain ways. Because a lot of those Korean thrillers go on a certain certain pathway. You've got a dude who is um, a, a handsome actor, blah, 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 who is performing a menial job, relatively menial job, whether it's labor or being a cashier or a clerk at a hotel I've seen um, or or a taxi driver, for example, and then that character runs into someone young, usually a young girl, um, uh, uh, like too young for there to be any romantic subtext, but um, old enough to like have her own her own like general mind and motivations. So like ten to seventeen, right? Sometimes a middle schooler, high schooler, a young girl who the main character gets attached to in some way. Um, I've seen in the hotel clerk example, I've seen them be like a, a, uh, a person who lives at the hotel but lives there, right? And um, has like, has parents who are fucked up or, or has like a single mom who's a drug addict or something like that. And then the main character gains some attachment to this person until 
the bad guys come and are like looking for that girl for some reason, right? And then off we go on an adventure as the main character tries to protect that character but is struggling with his own reasoning and motivation and sort of like, why am I doing this? I shouldn't be doing this. I should be just laying low and being a taxi driver, right? So I'm going to throw out a weird prediction that I don't think is the case but might be the case. Was our boy here, was Orokawa a soldier of some kind? Does he have some kind of fucking special forces training bullshit? And he's just like chilling trying not to be part of part of that life anymore and now he's going to get sucked into it i don't know I, I it seems like too cliche maybe even too obvious um and it doesn't seem like the character that we've got but this sort of jaded uh, uh sort of worn out old timery perspective that he comes in with sort of resonates with that idea for me it sort of tings something in the back of my head that makes me think that maybe Otokawa is more than he seems and maybe he seems like he is intentionally he does have trouble sleeping right um and that's not a huge thing lots of people have trouble sleeping but he has trouble sleeping and he has dreams he has weird dreams right so i'm wondering if he's got some kind of dark past that we might uncover here but to take a step back from what i'm actually predicting about the character the fact that our character is so like uniquely blank slate we don't know exactly what's up with him gives us in our our minds tons of room to run with ideas and theories about him and that indicates to me really interesting storytelling because we're creating an and conveyance of that character right we're creating somebody who might be fitting a whole bunch of different archetypes right so which one is he or is he none of them or is he just a taxi driver i don't know I don't know, but something about the show makes me fascinated to find out because he's already got like he, he sees the police pretty frequently and he's got a connection to them somehow, but we don't know exactly how. Uh, he makes a weird decision that we don't understand his reasonings for where he takes that girl who ends up going missing and takes her home with him and lets her live there in basically in his closet but doesn't seem to be like having kidnapped her. He c tells her repeatedly that she can run away. Maybe it's a fucking crazy twist and he's a murder monster and she's dead in the closet or some shit and he's talking to nobody because we don't hear a response from her. But I don't get the, the impression that that's the case. We want to like our main character because he's our main character and he's sort of our point of view in the world, but we don't know whether he's actually a good guy. But we think he is. He might be. He could be. It's unknown. It's unclear. I think some of that will might become more clear as um, the police officer looks at his, or I guess Dabu, uh, looks at his, uh, his SD card and looks at what's on the tape. Because if he's already gone in and wiped the specific tape that would in implicate him, that's really interesting, right? Like, does he know to do that? Is he thinking on that level or not? I don't know yet. We don't know yet. Okay, um... Stylistic transition, I think, is is really cool here. Um, this opening stylistic transition, right, from out of the OP, inside the place, CG car, right, we show this style on everything. I love the wavy lines and the, like, the, like, multi-outlines, and I guess what that is is actually we're seeing through our character's night blindness, right? Um, I don't know if night blindness is actually the term for what he's talking about. I thought night blindness is when you see a bright light and can't see in the dark, right? But I don't know. Rather, a symptom of an underlying eye problem, usually a retina problem, um, can be caused by medications that constrict the pupil, can, cause, can be caused by diabetes, retinitis, retinitis pigmentosa, etc., etc. And then, of course, uh, night blindness itself is not a hyper-technical term, um, but instead a, a like... Uh, a kind of a colloquialism that encompasses a whole bunch of different possibilities. So it's it's hard to say uh, uh, what we're dealing with, but I think I think that the way that we see the outside world is partly that, and it also creates this really interesting dynamic where. The things inside the taxi are so much more clear than the things outside the taxi, and I think that's really interesting. Regardless, we get this transition where we go through here, we show all of that stuff, and we do this this like CG shot 
um, with everything sort of blurring past us, uh, uh, that then starts transitioning into the world. We show all of these uh, elements and locations. The use of establishing shots and cuts to random things are stellar um, and, and extraordinarily stellar for a debuting director, right? This is the kind of stuff that creates flow and like pace and, and mood in a, in a show. Um, and our mood in the show is meant to match our main character, Otokawa's mood in the show, mostly. And also to react to him at the same time and respond to him at the same time and think about what he's thinking all the time. Because he's curious. He's, he's a curious character. Not that he is curious about the world, but he makes me curious about him, right? Um, but those, those cutaway shots, these, these like cut to that... Cut to the steering wheel, cut to the, the, the radio, cut to the back seat. These all establish a setting and a feel and a mood. And um, they do it in a way that a lot of directors can't do, right? Because when you're, when you're putting together a show like this and you're storyboarding it out or you're thinking about how, how cuts should function, a lot of what you're working with is like, how do we make this efficient? How do we get what we need on screen at when we need it? And then, and then peppering it with these cutaway shots that create so much of the feel of the show um, is not the first thing on a lot, of, a lot of directors, a lot of creatives' minds. You just show what you're trying to show and then you go from there. This demonstrates to me a, a like thought process in the director that's really interesting and makes me really excited as the rest of the show unfolds because we also find out that a lot of those little cutaways like showing the newspaper um, uh, showing specific characters showing specific things are actually relevant to the story right why do we show the the like monkey dude being a janitor well because he's a character I don't know what role he's gonna play but he's a character he's here he's there for some reason why I don't know um, but we show the, the, both the surface level lives of all of these characters, and then we show bits and pieces of the underlying underlife of these pieces, like the alpaca woman who sells drugs from her hospital to a gangster, or uh, uh, just all... <laughs> There's so much. There's so much. Um, I also I also see a ton of really great framing. This is a super isolating shot of this guy, right? We literally watch as as we go from crowd, lots of people, to a dude with with two girls flanking him, right? Playa playa, to all alone washing the floors, ignored by society, flying under the radar, right? super interesting and then we've got our alpaca pocketing drugs and the scene is right here it's what she's doing right now she's putting the drugs in her bag right now and we don't pick up on it but it is an ominous framing the framing is perfect for it she walks out gone and our gorilla looks and all of this with the backing of A really sick idol song made custom for the show that is that is totally in contrast with what we're actually seeing over the course of the the sequence. The music. Let's just I just want to put a little aside about all the music in this episode. Um, each backing track has been fantastic, has had me nodding along. The idol song is clearly a standout because it's a standout, um, as is the OP because it's, it's really cool sounding. I like it a lot. Um, but we get this whole idol song and dance. And I think, I think this is crucial, uh, thematically for the episode. I think, I think it's crucial. We talk about, in this episode, we talk about social media, the things that go viral and how they're often fake. And then we have this idol performance. And we show the idol performance as though you're watching on a TV, right? Like, this is what you see when you're on the TV. Great, great, great. What you don't see is what's immediately behind that, which is the camera operators, the sequencing going on, the, the manager on the phone in the background, right? There's a production. There's a whole system behind this that makes that happen. It's not just like a bunch of idols start singing in front of a camera, but the TV makes it feel like that's the case. There's a disconnect present between what's really happening and what we experience as happening. Just like there's a disconnect between what's said on social media 
idea and what's actually thought by people and what people are actually experiencing and what has actually happened. Sometimes it's totally a lie, right? And we, we see that as our the boy who gets in the car goes viral, right? He, he goes viral off of a ridiculous post that didn't mean anything with his freaking taxi driver, right? And it was a lie. It wasn't a thing that happened. He staged it right there. We watched him stage it. There's something off about the way that society views things versus the way that they actually are. And all of these are not like not fully explored yet. These are just bits and pieces tossed out that are like breadcrumbs that we're following. But the breadcrumbs lead in so many different directions that it's a mystery where the Wicked Witch's hut actually is. Where's the bad stuff? Where's the good stuff? Where's the way out and the way home? I don't know. I don't know. And because there's so much that I know that I don't know, I'm curious. I'm fascinated. I'm interested. And that speaks to me of really intricate and interesting storytelling because there's a lot of breadcrumbs here and they all seem to be leading to something, but I don't know what. Is Otokawa a good guy? Is, has he kidnapped this girl? He says he hasn't. He tells her that she can leave, but is it true? Does what he sees about himself match reality? Does what society sees about Dabu, the 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 fucking pill selling, pill buying, uh, uh, gangster guy who beats up people, and at least has a bunch of stories about being the, the guy who beats up people, is it true? I don't know. How do we? How would we know? We don't know where he is right now. We don't know what he's doing right now. Uh, this guy is clearly a character and is is fascinated with this idol group. And boom, we get our first fare of the night. And we have a really interesting conversation. Okay, conversations are the majority of the, the episode. Um, the visuals are interesting, but they're there to be the visuals. There's nothing going on here that's crazy, sakaga, hyper-impressive stuff. There just isn't. Uh, we got really simple character designs that are excellent. They're excellent, simple character designs. You look at each of these characters and you know what they're about pretty immediately. You see our, our sort of glum tired like me right uh uh sort of sort of fucking walrus guy right we know what he's about sort of we know what he's about on the surface we know what we would assume he's about right but all of that is built into baked into his character design uh uh this guy who i guess he's like a hippo sort of or a rhino or something i don't know what he is um uh is his he's his own dude the alpaca woman is the one that really stands out to me because she's so cute and fluffy and unassuming and then there's like clear darkness underneath that so what's really going on there i don't know i think the gorilla is a really excellent character design um uh, something about the like the like buff dude who's a doctor is a, a really key character archetype that i i think is really good it reminds me of um in, in Dimension 20's The Unsleeping City, there's uh, Dr. Lugash, um, uh, who is like a, he looks like fucking Frankenstein with giant forearms, but he's in like a tiny lab coat, uh, and he's a doctor, right? He's like an underground Russian doctor guy. It's, he's, he's like a, he, there's something about that archetype that you can, you, you wanna, you wanna like him. You, you, he's likable. He's straightforward. And I think that the gorilla is super straightforward, and I think he's the, the most clearly cut this character is who we think they are character in the whole thing. And we see a lot of that in his interactions with Otakawa. Um, it's really interesting. Okay, and then we get all of this Twitter dive into into interesting things on Twitter. Oh, right. I talked about character design, but I didn't talk about our character voices. The voice acting all the way through is immaculate. Um, um, each voice fits its character to a T and sounds really good. The way that the actual voice acting is done and like how it's recorded in studio is clearly really good. It's better than what I've got going on with my microphone setup. So teach me, um, <laughs> teach me more. But uh, uh, it's it's really crisp and really good. And then beyond that, on a level beyond that, the interplay between the characters and the timing of lines between characters is immaculate. Um, um, the spaces between, like, one character says something, another responds to it, especially in the doctor's office sequence where we've got three characters sort of chatting, and in the uh, bar sequence where we've got three characters chatting, right? Um, both are, are really believable. Not that they're necessarily realistic, but that they're believably 
be realistic, right? Which is a difference because what happens in media when characters are talking to each other isn't necessarily the, the way that timing works in reality, but it's the way that we think it should happen in media and it nails that. Which is part of why I say that, like, I, it's clear to me that this director has watched a ton of film and is interested in filmmaking because of the way that everything is put together in here. And I wouldn't be surprised, having not seen Taxi Driver in a while, um, having not seen Drive in a while, I wouldn't be surprised if there are shots and sequences that are almost, almost like, ripped. Not, like, stolen, but in, inspired by films. Um, uh, in fact... I'm putting Taxi Driver on a list for myself. Um, yeah. Because cause that's actually a really good, a good jumping off point to mention that I don't like comparative analysis, but I'm going to do a little bit here. Some elements of this feel almost Scorsese-esque. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know enough, and it's been too long since I've seen Scorsese films to put a finger on what it is, but something feels like that a little bit. Or maybe it's just because it's called Taxi Driver and this is also a, a show about taxis. You know, I don't know. Um, weird conversation about uh, uh, this. And your boy Otokawa has, is having none of it. He's immediately seeing like, oh, that sounds super fake. Whoever wrote this seemed like they were writing a manuscript and is also being pretentious about it by being, being like, oh, can't you tell how clever I am by writing this thing and how pithy my writing is? Um, and, and this is really good because we get this other character who's bouncing off of it and is telling us uh, in, in some sense, how society might view Otokawa's perspective on society itself, right? There's this whole cyclical thing going on that's really interesting. It's really interesting. Okay, so there's the photo, and there's our boy in the background, Hello Dabu, going off to do something, but what? I don't know. But it turns out these police are looking. Then we get the, the tenseness of this interaction. There's something really intense about this whole sequence, right? Oh, it's you, Otokawa, as if you didn't know. Have you seen this guy? Well, you should know. You're his friend. How does Otokawa know that this cop is crooked? How does he know that? Right? That's part of the thing that makes me think Otokawa's got more going on under the surface than, than we see. You know, he's got a thick layer of, of uh, walrus on him, but what's under the surface? I don't know. I'm asking for convenience's sake. Right, he, he just, that's odd. Aren't you friends with him? I'm asking for convenience's sake. Use your head. But we know that he runs into him and he just like dismisses it to his little brother. Full deflection, full dismissal. Uh, he's just crazy. All right, out of here you go. And then, you know, yeah, he's losing him. He tells lies. Wow, what a dick. He's anal about stupid little details. Guest on a vision test, got night blindness. Why did you become a taxi driver? Some kind of flash. It seems like this is a woman driving, um, uh, driving him, but I don't know why. Maybe, maybe it's something as simple as like somebody he knew and cared about got in a drunk driving accident, and so he wants to be a taxi driver so that people who are drunk don't have to drive. Or maybe this is a fucking getaway vehicle from a robbery or some shit. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. But it's something. It's something, something. Okay, here is fine. Don't forget anything in the car, and he immediately does. High school girl gone missing, and that keeps popping up. Forgot my phone. Notifications won't stop. Checking it out, and wait a second. There's Dabu in the background looking right at us. Weird. Whoosh. Transition to Dabu buying stuff from Alpaca Lady. Really love this eye catch. Um, um, the orange offset with the orange offset with the orange with the gray and white. It's so good. It's so good looking. Okay, did this, got into a taxi, where? Here. Starts talking to nobody, she's here. Why'd you come here? And we slow zoom into it as though we're going to show it, almost horror movie-esque, and then we don't. <sighs> Playing with expectations. Mmm. Reminds me, um, on Friday night last week, uh, uh, my my roommates set up a projector in the backyard and we watched like three movies back to back, which was super fun. But one of the films that we watched was a film that I've never seen before and have been wanting to see uh, called Event Horizon. And I found Event Horizon absolutely fascinating as a movie um, because of precisely and solely 
a lot of other things that are cool about the film, precisely and solely because of the camera work. Because every shot plays with expectations in a really intriguing way. The way the camera like slow pans and slow zooms in every shot creates this expectation that we're going to see something that almost never pans out. And then when it does, it's not in the way that you expect. The cinematography of that film, not just like how things are shot, but the thought process behind it and the intentional misleading of the audience through camera motion was was really impressive to me over the course of Event Horizon. Like watching it from the perspective of somebody who cares about such things and cares about filmmaking and is is like keeping an eye out for what the um what the creators are doing to to lead the audience in certain directions was an absolute treat because the film is doing so much to play with you. There's this whole subtext t subtextual uh, 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 interplay between the audience and the filmmakers that's that's like a whole other story going on in the background of the whole film um, as it plays out each scene and, and keeps playing with expectations, does one thing one way and then does it again, but it ends up with a different result. So you never know precisely what to expect from the camera work and from what's coming in the film. And there are bits and pieces of, of that kind of a thought process behind the camera of this film, which is all a thing that's done in storyboard mostly um, uh, for anime. And I think that's really interesting. And I just wanted to bring it up because it was something that was on my mind and made me think about uh, camera movement a little bit more. But like this slow zoom in, we expect, I expect to see something behind there, but there's nothing. It's all mystery. You don't know what's happening. So that's fucking interesting. Okay, um, the whole conversation here is really interesting. I don't understand the, uh, the whole thing about the Donraku eraser uh, with only one of them in the world. Why does it matter? I don't know. Uh, and we're talking about Rakugo, and we talk about all this generational gap stuff that ends up coming back into play when we talk to the alpaca lady a little bit later when she's in the, in the taxi. Um, and why don't you get married uh, already? Well, that could have something to do with the flashback we saw, but I don't know. I just don't know. And then the whole Bruce Springsteen, we are the world thing sort of deflects away from it. And then he brings it back to it. And then we deflect away from it. And then he brings it back to it. Okay, so investigating, investigating, without a warrant, searching, um, takes the, the video recording. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Or is he covering for Dabu in some way? Covering up like, like some kind of thing? I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, we see this dude, uh, the janitor on tw on Twinder, uh, uh, Tinder esque sort of thing, looking for marriage. I make no money. I am skinny, and uh, I'm 41 years old, and that sucks. My boy, just lie about your money, lie about what you make. Everything ties together. The same idol. I love the art style so much. Um, I love the look of all the characters so much. They they work so well as these emotionally resonant character designs. As we talk about Odakawa, as we talk about Dabu, as we banter back and forth. The, the timing of all of the jokes and the interplay between the characters is so crisp and clean. Um, and also the way that we interrupt things with new plot points uh, coming in, like him getting the phone call and there's a clear plot point there. And that's going on at the same time as the actual handoff after the taxi driver drops her off. It creates this tangled web feeling where like we're in the middle of something and we don't know what's going on and we have to connect the dots in order to figure out the story. And it is possibly my favorite kind of storytelling is this this multi-path everything's linked together sort of sort of vibe i'm fascinated already you remember me you're damn right i do we just talked we just talked in the freaking in the place and we get the cop handoff boom bam done and done cut to ed brilliant Great, great place to cut to ED. Um, uh, adds another layer to the mystery, right? Confirms some things that we were suspicious about. Makes us more suspicious of some things that seemed totally innocent. Oh. What an episode one. What an episode one. From starting off with a bop in the music, with cool animation in the whole, what I assume is going to be the continuing OP sequence, to... The stylistic uh, uh, 
waking up after a weird dream of our main character to the slow burn introduction of all of these other characters and an un an understanding immediately of who those characters are based on what other people say about them and then what we see them do, especially Dabu, who seems to be right at the center of a lot of the underground stuff in this to the conversations between the characters and the way the dialogue is scripted and the way the voice actors portray the dialogue scripting and the way that the ADR director, the voice acting director, has them actually interacting and has the timing down and has everything going to the intricate multi-part story that is all pieces that form some kind of shape, but it's like looking at a Rorschach blot and we don't know what it is exactly uh, uh, until we get more information to the underlying mysteries, not only of, of the story going on, but of the characters in that story and who they are because we don't know how they're going to act because we don't understand what their motivations are, especially Otakawa, because... Who is he? What is his deal? I don't know. Maybe he's just a taxi driver, right? Maybe he doesn't have a super dark past, blah, blah, blah. But maybe he does. And all of this blank slate is just getting filled throughout the course of the episode with my own interpretations and my own assumptions and my own guesses at what could be going on. And it's confirming some of them and denying some of them and leaving a whole lot of space for those guesses to sort of take root in my brain and probably be wrong later down the line as we find out more interesting things about this mystery. The pacing and tone and style and vibe of this first episode is absolutely the coolest thing that we've watched in a good long time, and I am super excited to see where it goes from here. Um, if they can keep this kind of, of tension, um, like the tension that I feel wondering what's going on and being excited to find out what's going on, as the episodes progress, then this is this is a top tier show. Um, not it like it doesn't look it doesn't look hyper impressive. It doesn't it's not going to be getting tons of hits on like Sakuga blogs and stuff. But as an experience of watching a cool story that is being played out in an anime format and using anime as its format to create an interesting dynamic between these characters and in this city and this whole this whole social versus individual thing that seems to be thematically interesting in the background oh if it can keep it going if it can keep it going i'm so goddamn pleased i'm so goddamn pleased all right we gotta we gotta head toward wrapping it up I have been Tiaboo. This has been Odd Taxi. Thank you, patrons, for voting for this. This is fascinating so far. We'll see if that maintains all the way to the end. But, um... Hell yeah, Odd Taxi. Uh, next week's episode will be up early on Patreon uh, when this one goes live on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube sometime today, the next one will be up on Patreon. Uh, so check that out in the description. Uh, and that's going to be a wrap. I'll see you next time for more Odd Taxi. Peace. <laughs>